Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation, please be uh, seated. Let us uh, pray. By the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable to thee, O Lord our God and our Redeemer. Amen. Today we are gathered together here to ask. Thank God for the year 2023 and also to welcome the year 2024. A man had a dream. It was uh, the last night of the year. In his dream, uh, he saw Jesus. And uh, Jesus uh, looked at this uh, young man. Of course, the young man was uh, very, very excited. And uh, he was very happy to see Jesus. And Jesus uh, asked him, uh, Son, the year has come to an end. What have you achieved through the year? What have you achieved through the year? Well, the young man was uh, a very vibrant, uh, very active man. So he uh, told Jesus all that he achieved through the year. All the achievements. His uh, promotions and uh, uh, that he had bought a new car, he had bought a new house, and uh, so he went on and on and on. Jesus, uh, so then uh, uh, he listened. Uh, he said, "Fine." After the man had uh, finished, the man just looked at him and asked, "Well done." He said, "Well done. You have uh, achieved a lot through the year." Then he asked him, uh, what have you achieved for my glory? What have you achieved for my glory? That's a nice uh, tribal lyric. says, what a kage na maritene, yena kage ni yena saida. I died for you. What have you done for me? So, when Jesus uh, raised this question to the uh, man, and uh, the man was, he could not really answer because uh, he was uh, so wrong in himself. He was so busy uh, trying to uh, accumulate uh, wealth for himself, to achieve things for himself that God not really uh, play any part because for him uh, uh, life is short so uh, work and enjoy. We read the story of uh, like that in uh, Matthew chapter 20. Story of a rich young man. We all know this uh, story if you turn to uh, Matthew chapter 19. Verse 16. Now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? So, so that is a young man. He must have been, uh, he, he was definitely a very a rich young man. Not only was he a rich young man, he must have been a very religious young man. So of course Jesus uh, goes on, uh, why do you ask me about what is good? And uh, verse 18, which ones? The man in inquired. Jesus replied, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony. Verse 20, all this 
are kept. The young man said, what do I still lack? So there was this uh, young man. He had uh, accumulated so much of wealth. He was uh, rich. He must have achieved a lot of things in his uh, life. A very religious uh, young man. But there was something that was uh, missing in his life. There was something uh, missing in his life. And he, he did not know what was missing. So he goes from Jesus. He says, Jesus, I have got all the things. I have got all the wealth. I have uh, achieved a lot of things in life. And I'm a religious man. But yet, uh, he says, uh, there's something missing. Uh, there's, uh, there's, I don't think have this uh, uh, assurance of uh, eternal life. And of course, uh, Jesus uh, told the young man, hey, go and sell all, to, all that you have, give the poor and follow me. Verse uh, uh, 22. When the young man heard this, he went away sick because he had great wealth. So we, has, we see a young man that uh, went this uh, morning to experience the eternal life. But he was uh, so caught up with the things of this world that he was not able to uh, give up and uh, enjoy the eternal life that uh, Jesus spoke to him about. Today we are three attributes that follow the uh, gospel lesson. Talks about the naming, uh, the circumcision of uh, Jesus. was a, 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 a sign of the covenant uh, between God and uh, Abraham and his descendants, the Israelites. So the uh, Israelites uh, faithfully kept that uh, part of the covenant. They made sure every male child was circumcised. So Jesus on the eighth day, he was circumcised. So the uh, Jews, uh, they thought, hey, we are keeping uh, our part, uh, we, we are following uh, the religion uh, thought to God by uh, Moses. We are keeping all the laws. So they thought uh, they are okay. But then uh, things are not very okay with them. If we turn to uh, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 4. Yet God calls on the people of Israel and He says, Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Circumcise your heart. Not just uh, the first thing He says, uh, circumcise your heart. Why did God call on the people of Israel, the Jews, to circumcise their heart? Because of the wickedness. Because they were religious people who uh, kept all the uh, laws, or at least they tried to keep all the laws. But uh, apart from that, their hearts were just uh, full of, uh, of wickedness. They were, their hearts were full of uh, rebellious uh, spirit. They were actually living for themselves. They were actually living for themselves. So God says uh, to Jeremiah, circumcise your heart. Now we are called not to live for ourselves. But sometimes we can even not use religion for ourselves. Why we seek God? So that God will bless us. So that we can have a good life here on earth. So religion can easily be abused. And that's exactly what the uh, people of uh, Israel did. They were a religious people. The Pharisees were religious, the Sadducees were religious, the scribes were religious. They were all religious people. But yet, Jesus called them whitewashed uh, because there was so much of a uh, garbage in their heart. As Christians, uh, 
We are called not to live for ourselves. We are called to live for Christ. But one year has passed. The year 2023 has passed. There's no point looking behind and uh, sitting down and uh, regretting. Of course, it's good to look back once in a while and uh, in the, the spirit of uh, to learn. Ah, I made a mistake. I don't want to make the same mistake again. It's no point looking at behind uh, the mistakes that uh, we have made, then uh, going to uh, depression or uh, case of guilt. Now, as Christians, uh, we are called to press on. That's, I, I like uh, what uh, Paul writes in the Philippians chapter 3. It's a beautiful uh, letter, Paul writes from the uh, prison. I read for you a uh, verse uh, 10. Philippians 3, verse 10. I want to know Christ and the power of his letters. Now Paul, we know that we know Paul for who he was. And yet he says, uh, he says, I want to know Christ. I and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his uh, suffering. So Paul says, no, 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 I, I, it's not about me. Paul says, it's not about me. I'm not living for myself. I'm not seeking uh, God, I'm not seeking uh, Jesus for myself. And I want to live for him. So I say, sir, I want to know Christ. He says, I want to know Christ. That should be the uh, desire of every Christian. Now the year 2023 has passed. The year 2024, that could be our desire. We say, God, in the year 2024, I want to know you. God, I want to experience you. I want to experience your presence every day in my life. And that's why Paul says, he goes on to say, and the power of his resurrection. We must ask ourselves, do we really know God? Do we really know Jesus? And sometimes I always wonder if we really know uh, Jesus. Sometimes we know uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, actors, actresses, their name, uh, they are, uh, we know their, in their history, yeah, where uh, they were born and their date, date of birth, like they are married, unfamiliar to a married, uh, all these companies, the actors, what the movies they are going to release, uh, some of you want to uh, try to imitate them. But do we have the kind of design to know Jesus? Now, as Christians, you must have the desire to become like Jesus. And now, uh, the only way we can do is by uh, looking to Him. That's what Paul says uh, in verse, I want to know Christ. Now, Paul says, I want to know Christ. He does not say, I've known Christ. Even though he had met Jesus, he says, I still want to know. I want to be transformed. I want to become like Jesus. I want people to see the power of Christ, the presence and power of Christ in my life. Do people see the uh, presence power of Christ in our lives? I'm not sure if people see that in our lives. Sometimes there's not much difference between us and uh, non-Christians. Uh, uh, we are all religious people. It's just that we want a different label. We are labeled Christians. Uh, uh, the the right-hand side neighbor is labeled a uh, Hindu, the left-hand side neighbor is labeled as a uh, Buddhist, the back, uh, back uh, neighbor is uh, labeled as a uh, Muslim. What is the label? After that, there's no difference. But as Christians, as we grow in Christ, that should be our desire. God, I want to grow in Him. I want to know Jesus. I want to become like Jesus. I want people to see the power, the resurrected power of Jesus in my life. And in order for that to happen, we must ask God to circumcise our heart. Does it, uh, the old says, circumcise your heart? We need to circumcise our heart. Not become like Jesus, say, it just can't, will not happen overnight. Now, yet every year, we, some people make the kind of resolution, uh, they say, uh, in the year 2024, I'm going to lose. 5 kg. Now I go and say, doctor, the doctor says, 
Uncle, he was very spruce way. Eh? Sometimes I wonder, whether I can tell the doctor he must also lose some weight or something. Well, that, that, that's something. I think that's uh, like an ancient modern uh, uh, hymn for them. Uh, you go and see a doctor, they say, but you can't drink ice, uh, you must lose weight. So you come back and say, hey, I want to lose weight. In the year 2024, I want to lose 5 kilos. You are determined, huh? You want to lose 5 kilos, huh? Nobody don't lose any more weight, huh? Then you might be blown away by the wind. So you cannot die, huh? No, you can't lose weight by thinking. Can we? Can I say I'm going to lose weight? I'm going to lose weight? I'm going to lose weight? Can we lose weight? Yes, by thinking. No. We must by intentionally discipline ourselves to lose weight. We must change our lifestyle. We must change our eating, uh, eating habits. We must. Uh, Go do a lot of regular exercises. No, this must be done, all this must be done intentionally. Only then we can see some results. So, no. We can't say, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. Then we go to mama shop and have a nice uh, uh, car hotel or uh, uh, or uh, go to a uh, Chinese uh, restaurant and have a nice uh, big bowl of uh, curry meat. Yeah. Likewise, in our spiritual life, now if you if you want to know become like Christ, if you want to if you want if you want to experience the power of the resurrection of Christ, we must intentionally discipline our spiritual life. Which means I must say, God, in the year 2024, I want to become your disciple. I yes, I am a Christian. I am I am a religious person, but I want to throw away all this and I want to become. A disciple of yours. And what do I do? I must change my lifestyle. I must start reading the Bible. Uh, I, I don't want to ask how many of you are reading the Bible regularly. It can be very embarrassing. We must uh, spend time uh, praying. No, we must read the Bible. We must uh, meditate on the Word of God. Allow the word of God to shine its light in our lives. But sometimes we can become so comfortable with our life, we think that I'm a religious person. No, I'm not as bad as Canada. Kind of a lot of Christians have that kind of parasitic attitude. I'm not as bad as Canada. Kind of, I'm not as bad as the Reuben. Therefore, I have no need for repentance. So when I I need to say, God, the Holy Spirit, you shine your light. I need to dark in this my life. Sometimes there's so much of wickedness in our life. There's so much of bitterness. There's so much of hatred. There's so much of anger. There's so much of unforgiveness. All hidden in our life. In our heart. With all these things, how can we become like Jesus? How can we become like Jesus? Now sometimes we live like the worldly people. We do exactly what the others do. So how will the world see the holiness of Christ in our life? We are called it that the old uh, biblical thinking that God calls the people of Israel and says, You shall be holy for thou, for I am holy. They say, I'm holy. Because I'm holy. You shall also be told. So do we have the kind of desire? And in which way, we must the intention say, God, I am going to change my lifestyle. The year 2024. Now live alone now trying to achieve anything for God. There's no need to achieve anything for God. God can achieve what He wants to achieve. What God wants us, He wants a pure heart, clean hands. He wants the disciples who will follow him. Disciples will be prepared to carry their cross to the point of death. That's the kind of followers that Jesus is looking forward to. Now I cannot say because I want to achieve something for God. Now God has a plan for each one of us. 
God has a plan. And then uh, when we commit ourselves, then God knows how and when to use us for His plan. So here it says, uh, we must, uh, the desire must be there. And uh, verse, uh, uh, the, uh, verse 12, not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on the hold for that of, of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. So, so for what God Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. Now we can't just uh, uh, see God to uh, rubber stamp our place. So we must ask the God, what is your plan for us? I want to know you. And uh, to press on. Now if you go to the view, now we, we all have seen that. Uh, uh, at least, uh, other, other matter, 100 meters or 200 meters or 400, uh, 800 or 1,500 doesn't matter. They will be dressed in the lightest uh, clothing. Even the shoes are very, very light because they want to be as light as possible. For because of that, every second matters. So in our spiritual journey, we must be prepared to. Discard all these uh, unwanted things that the world has put on us, all the things that we have gathered, especially the sins. If we want to run a good race, if we want to become like Christ, I must be prepared to say, no, I'm going to give up everything. I'm going to take the cross and follow Christ. And uh, only then we will be alive. And we can really press on. And uh, as we wait upon the Lord, the Lord will uh, not only show us uh, the hidden sins in our lives, but not only help us to uh, ren confess, renounce those things, He will also give us the strength to walk in His life and to uh, press on. So, can we, uh, what is your goal for the year 2024? Leave alone uh, losing. 5 kilo, 10 kilo. It doesn't matter. You lose weight or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, uh, someone said, it, someone told me, but you don't lose any more weight. Uh, I said, why? If you lose any more weight, you look very old. Uh. So, it doesn't matter. Whether you lose weight or you put on weight, of course, my health is to be, uh, but there's something more important our heart, our inner man. We must take care of it. Our inner man. So that the truth is here, we can truly stand and shine for Jesus. Can we make that as our goal for the year 2024? That I want to shine for Jesus. Let us put away all our selfish motives. Now, we must, if we want to live for Christ, we must put away, we must crucify all our selfish motives. We must crucify every thought that is not in the corners of the world. We must crucify them in the law of God to hold through the cleanses and make us uh, holy. Then the world outside will see the light of Christ in our lives. Then the world outside will be able to see the light of Christ in the life of the church. So let us press on. In order to press on, we must make sure we circumcise our heart. Get rid of all unwanted thoughts. Get rid of all unwanted attitudes, attitudes that are not in a the word of God. And allow God to fill our hearts with His holiness. Let God fill our hearts with His love. Let God fill our hearts with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Then, in year 2024, will definitely be a year of blessing to you and you will be a blessing to men and you bring glory to God of heart. Set aside your heart and press on to take hold for which, of which God has taken hold of you. God bless you. That is true. Most of the gracious Father, we want to thank you for the year 2024. Let's move on to the year 2024. Father, it is our design to uh, um, reflect you, to reflect Jesus in every area of our lives. And Father, we pray that you will guide us 
even as we read your word, even as we attend your services, Bible studies, even as we meditate on your word, we pray that uh, God, the Holy Spirit, will shine your mind in our uh, areas that we need to make amendments, areas that we need to uh, uh, renounce, so that we can uh, press on uh, towards the goal for which you have taken hold of us all, to become like you, reflect you in every area of our lives. Bless us, the Lord. That we will continue to be a blessing to you and to men as we journey through the year 2024. In Jesus' most precious and holy name, Amen. Let us arise as we send the seven to bed.